Let's figure out what the heck is going on with the defensive tackle situation for the Houston Texans. Let's talk about new money, Joe Mixon. Lots of stuff to get to in the live stream. Appreciate you tuning in, whether you're watching it live and you're already in the chat or you're watching this after the fact. I appreciate you taking the time to check it out here on the YouTube channel. I'm indeed. It is my YouTube channel. Check out the work on Houston football. The link's in the description down below on the agenda. Lots to get to. Want to talk about Eric Armstead, him going to the Jacksonville Jaguars, and if the Texans miss out on a big time defensive tackle, the move that they ultimately did make at defensive tackle, what I'm calling him as new money Mixon, and anything and everything that we do. Comments are encouraged. The Super Chats get you to the front of the line, and let's get to it. The Houston Texans are not going to get Eric Armstead. Armstead ultimately ended up signing a three-year $51 million with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, Armstead did not take a pay cut from the San Francisco 49ers. He was scheduled to make about $17 million, and he didn't take a pay cut from the San Francisco 49ers. When he did not take that pay cut, to stay with one of the most competitive, impressive, and successful organizations in football, we should have all understood Eric Armstead was looking to get paid. One of the guys that I follow that covers the 49ers said Armstead believed he could get into the defensive tackle market and make some big money. So what did Eric Armstead do? He got out there, got into the defensive tackle market, and made some big money. Now, if you missed this, little bit of moving information from the past couple of days. The Texans had a trade in place with the San Francisco 49ers that would have sent Malik Collins, their defensive tackle, to the 49ers for Eric Armstead. Based on what Armstead got, it seems like the Texans maybe even would have extended Eric Armstead. Knowing what the going rate now is for Eric Armstead, I have no interest in Eric Armstead at $17 million a year. At $17 million a year, he did not make sense for this team because at that number, you're not getting Daniel Hunter. And I would much rather pay Daniel Hunter $25, $25.5 million a year than pay Eric Armstead $17 million a year. Now, does the trade of Malik Collins for a seventh round pick look a little unique? Have a tough time understanding exactly why you consider continuing to go through with that trade. Yes, you didn't save a tremendous amount of money. And the audio is going in and out. Oh, man, what's going on here? I can't hear the audio. I can just hear myself. Real quick. Oh, boy. In the middle of a great stream, firing off all the hot takes and the audio craps out. Hold on, I might be able to fix this. Oh, man. All right, give it a second. Give it a second. Oh, now the camera's gone. This is a banner day. <laughs> this is going great. <laughs> oh, boy. I was due I was due for this. All the all the grief I give Landry Locker when he has issues sometimes. And now it's happening to me. Orientations are the same on one's live. It's great. All right, hold on one second. It's a hostage situation. Look at this. Oh, boy. 
Hey, look, everybody. Okay, here we go. Audio's good. Video's good. All right, let's roll. Where was I? Eric Armstead at three years, $51 million, made no sense for the Texans. Now, understanding what the situation was in the Collins for Armstead trade, Daniil Hunter's the better player. It made more sense to get Daniil Hunter. It made more sense to have the elite pass rusher than to have a defensive tackle who's had injury issues over the past couple of seasons. And then once he hit the free agency market, notice nobody said the Texans offered him a contract. Nobody Notice nobody said the Texans are, you know, in the hunt necessarily. They were keeping tabs. The Chronicle and Aaron Wilson both said no audio was, or no audio. I'm reading the comment section about the audio thing. No contract was offered. At that money, that doesn't make sense. The Collins for Armstead deal makes sense until you realize that they, that probably cost them Daniel Hunter. So it's a great pivot by Nick Casario. Hey, the Armstead thing's taking too long. We can get Hunter. They pivot to Hunter, and it turns out to be a really impressive move, one of the best moves in all of free agency. Then they still go through with the Collins deal, which doesn't make sense unless there's something that the Texans know about Collins that we don't, because they didn't save a tremendous amount of money. They didn't replace him with any sort of notable defensive tackle. And as far as the, um, as far as the options of defensive tackle, there's not that many, you know, Tim settle. And I know everybody's got their settle jokes, Tim settle. They signed him two year deal up to $7 million. He plays defensive tackle for the bills last year. Fine player. I mean, he's a rotational guy. Maybe he starts and look, maybe you play a little bit more than Nico Autry at the defensive tackle spot, but trying to figure out exactly what may to make of the Malik Collins thing. We may not know until Malik Collins gets out on the field and um, plays for the 49ers. If he doesn't play well or he gets hurt or there's some sort of longstanding injury or something like that, that we don't know about. Remember Collins got dinged up real bad at the end of the season last year. Did that not get fixed right? Or is that something that was going to linger with the team or, or with Collins and the team wasn't comfortable with it? I don't know. We may not ever understand why Malik Collins, who is a fine starting caliber defensive tackle, got traded for a seventh round pick. We may never fully understand that. I tell you what Nick Casario is not going to do. He's not going to go to a press conference in front of the microphone and say, oh yeah, Malik Collins, we didn't like him anymore. We didn't think he was any good. Like he's going to say, we did what's in the best interest of the team. So it's going to be watching Malik Collins next year if something pops up, how he plays. And even then, the conversation may be, hey, it still doesn't validate sending him out there for a seven. Because again, you only saved about 2.5 million bucks. Um, and uh, he was he was a starter and he has yet to be replaced. So and if you don't count Autry as a defensive tackle, they've got a bunch of players with none of them necessarily being starting caliber players. So that's where we are on the defensive tackle thing. A couple of comments to get to. A couple of people want to jump in on the video, including Daniel, Techno Viking, and Deuce. We'll get to all of you. JB, I appreciate you for the super chat. Thank you so much. And then JB followed it up with, hey, Stutes, what could plan B look like at defensive tackle? Well, it looks like right now, it looks like Tim Settle and Khalil Davis. <laughs> you know, But there's no DJ Reader. He's on the Detroit Lions now. Uh, there's no Sheldon Rankins. They made a run at Sheldon Rankins yesterday. They got up to a $12 million offer, according to Aaron Wilson. Sheldon Rankins made $13 million a year. You know, coming up short a million dollars on a guy like Sheldon Rankins is that great? You know, no, it's not. But, you know, there's something about defensive tackle. There's something somewhere that either we're not seeing or they feel confident about. And I would say, here's what I would say as, as well as we think about a Tim Settle or some of these other names that are out there in free agency. Malik Collins was not the most impressive player when he got to the Houston Texans. Um, he turned into an impressive player, in large part because Nick Casario found him, brought him in, got a couple of contract extensions with the team. Like Not, not to say Collins was bad. He wasn't. He was, he was very okay having played for the Cowboys and the Raiders, but he was coming off a bad season with the Raiders 
where he basically had played the worst football of his career and he came in and turned into a productive member for the Houston Texans. They've got to find that guy in free agency is what they've got to do. They've got to find that guy. They've got to find the guy that sucked last year or two years ago and they can turn into a really nice player. That's what I feel like they've got to do at defensive tackle. We'll go through some of the names and kick some of those around here in just a second. I want to get some of the comments from the people who want to jump in. Appreciate the super chats, JB. Daniel, you've been patiently waiting, even through the technical issues. What's up, Daniel? Fire away. I'm more curious than what you think we're going to do in wide receiver. Are we going to go for the draft, or are we going to go for one of the like cheaper options? Maybe look at someone like Michael Thomas, who's going to be coming from the Saints. Because uh, we have the number one and two. I think Tank Dell and Nico Collins fit that. What we can't have is the games that we had where Schultz was out, Nico was out, and Tank was out. And all we were left with John Mechie and a bag of balls, basically. Yeah. Noah Brown and such. Yeah. yeah look, that I, sounds I, pretty good, too. I, I, think they're, it, I think their veteran option right now is Noah Brown. Like, bringing him back on the, on the deal that goes up to $5 million, like, that's your vet. I fully believe they're going to chase wide receiver. Now, if they have to go chase defensive tackle in the first round, that limits you a little bit. But there should be defensive tackles that are available on day two. There should be players that can help you at defensive tackle. Maybe not right away, but factor into the equation on day three. But I fully believe with a, a wide receiver group here that feels like it feels like there's 20 dudes that are solid wide receivers – I do feel like there's a chance they're going to get a wide receiver within the first three selections that they make on the in the draft. Awesome. Daniel, I appreciate you jumping in, man. Good stuff. Good stuff. A couple of defensive tackle names for you to watch draft time, and we'll go over these guys as the draft season rolls on, but just kind of put a little pin in it, think about it. Byron Murphy from Texas, we've talked about him a ton. That's a guy you got to think about. Johnny Newton from Illinois. A little bit smaller than people expected when he's at the combine. He's dealing with an injury. Um, dealing with an injury that he's working back from. Braden Fiske from Florida State, athletic freak, crushed the combine. Chris Jenkins, if that name sounds familiar, Chris Jenkins, the former Miami Dolphins defensive tackle. This is his son. And then, of course, Tavondre Sweat is a name that I think you should keep into the back of your mind. He is one of one. There's not somebody totally like him in the draft. So keep his name in mind. And one more for you, Michael Hall Jr., the defensive tackle from Ohio State. Techno Viking was going to be next, but then he jumped out. So Deuce, you're up. Fire away. What's going on, Cody? Hey, what you got for me, man? Hey, man, I was just um, talking to you, uh, talking to you on Twitter. What was it yesterday? I think I had uh, gave you a hypothetical about Brave and Allen and Joe Mixon, the pairing of those two together. Um have like a you know a, you know one of those nasty thunder and lightning one two punches. Um, I'm not off of Damian Pierce, Damian Pierce yet, but it's not looking great. He got about one more year to to prove it to to the coaches and to uh, pretty much Houston that he's worth keeping around. And uh, even as a even as a um, Oh, uh, a reduced role as a running back three, running back yep. two, somebody gets injured. I'm still having trouble trying to uh, see that because every time he got the ball last year, he was straight running into the back of his O-line. And I know some of that has to do with blocking and all of that stuff, but good running backs still find holes. They still find a way. You, uh, I know we're not comparing Saquon to, to Pierce, but – Saquon is great because he had terrible old line, but still find a way to uh, do his thing. And uh, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I got all love for for Damian Pierce because uh, he pretty much saved us. He didn't save us, but he, he was made the only bright spot. Interesting. He made 2022 yeah, he, interesting. He was the only bright spot of, uh, of this offense two years ago. So uh, when you look at the just the decline and uh, in production and how how pretty much just like. He never got a chance to get his spot back after after he got injured. What was the uh, week six or something, something like that? It banged up uh, right around the Falcons game. Came back injured when he when he did get out there. He, he wasn't good, so it, you know. Right, it, you right, know. right. And yeah. you getting your spot took by Devin Singletary. That's it's not a good look. It, yeah. it, Devin Singletary is a, the best. He's definitely not the best, but he's not the worst. But you getting your spot took by Devin Singletary, it's not a good look. 
It's not a good look at all. Deuce, I appreciate you jumping in, man. I'll talk a little bit about DP. Um, look, I would love for Damian Pierce to bounce back, be that second option, because then you're, you, you know, with Mixon's extension, which we'll talk about here in just a second, and um, Damian Pierce, you, you know, you're, you're squared away for the next couple of years, but you can't go into the season with a bet on Damian Pierce bouncing back. You've got to have options. He could end up bouncing back, but you've got to have options if if you're going into this season and Damian Pierce is your guy without question. That's rough, man. That's rough. I see those super chats. I want to get to those real quick. Quentin Swift, buddy of mine, he says, keep up the great work. You're the Lasan al Gaib of Texans reporters. <laughs> if you haven't seen the new Dune movie, that doesn't make a lot of sense to you. If you have seen the new Dune movie, um, that will make you uh, chuckle a little bit. Quentin, I appreciate that, man. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, Hassan Al Gaib. He is you're you're my Stilgar, so thank you for the Dune fans. You'll get that. Low key, low key. Do we pivot to Justin Simmons now? No DTs left. Look, I'd love Justin Simmons. I, I I don't know if the price works. I would tell you this: the longer a player that you want lasts in free agency, the better chance there is that the Texans can go get him. Okay, the longer a player lasts, the better chance because that price keeps going down and down and down and down and down. Techno Viking wants to weigh in. Thank you for being patient, Techno Viking. What do you got for me? I'm not uh -oh. to uh, say anything for sake, man. And we have been following you and loving what you're doing. And everybody's just got to try in Casario. Miko. Used to be trust in case Kino. Te Te Techno Viking, they're your, making your, crazy moves. Your audio is kind of crazy. Uh, come back in. Come out and come back in in just a second. Your audio is kind of crazy. What? Who did I make mad in the world of audio gods that my audio stuff has been messed up? What did I do to deserve this? Disconnect and reconnect, Techno Viking, and I'll get right to you when you pump back in there. He's mid sale in the Atlantic. <laughs> That's funny. All right, let's check it out real quick. How about now? No, it's your. Oh, here we go. Here we, uh, the mic is not connected. All right. We'll come back to you in a second again, Techno Viking. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. The audio gods not not our our friends tonight. Loki, Loki, with another super chat. Fuller setting the cornerback market. Do we get Steven Nelson back? I don't believe Steven Nelson's coming back, and for a variety of reasons. One, I don't know if the Texans are going to spend the money on him. He's going to want some money. He's very proud of the five interceptions that he had last year. And number two, um, Steven Nelson's not going to play slot corner while Jeff Okuda starts. And the Texans, I don't believe, brought in Jeff Okuda on a contract that's one year up to $6 million. Um, I don't believe that they brought Okuda in to be a backup. So I don't believe that uh, Steven Nelson is an option for this team. Let me send a little message here in the private chat to Techno Viking real quick. Okay. Try to get that in there. If you guys want to get in like Deuce or TV, um, you're welcome to get in there. It's the link that is pinned at the top of of the chat appreciate you loki loki for the uh super chats and uh debully appreciate you for the super chat as well you guys are very generous man i appreciate that the super chats are awesome um i really appreciate them they're very helpful and uh, i love everybody in here supporting the comments and things like that you guys are great you guys are great. let's try techno viking one more time tv are you there All right, it's still not working. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> he had the same reaction I did when I realized my audio was not working. He just goes, ah. Oh. <laughs> okay. My audio is not working. JR, is your audio working? <laughs> okay. JR, fire away. Your audio working. Hello, hello, hello. What's up, Cody? Yeah, what you got, man? Fire away. Okay, fire away. All right, man. So check this out, dude. So, um, <laughs> Turn down How do you feel about free agency video. so far? Turn down my video. I can hear it in the background. And then All right, you can you hear it now? Yeah. You good? Yeah, fire away. All right, cool. 
All right, so how do you feel about uh, free agency, and how do you feel about this first and second round pick, man, coming up? Because I wouldn't mind taking Xavier Leggett and Peyton Wilson in the second round. Now, that might involve trading back to get in front of the Baltimore Ravens and the Chiefs. So from 23, fall back to about 26, 27, get a wide receiver or something like that. You know, what, do you, what, what, do you, what are your thoughts on that? Man, I look. I've really enjoyed most of this free agency to this point. And I feel like the way free agencies operated, the kind of, I don't want to call them needs, but the hopeful spots you want to fill are setting up for a Casario trade back. Because right. if he can trade back a few picks, pick up a day two pick, then he can right. move around in the second and third round. He's drafted Nico Collins, Tank Dell, Juice Scruggs, um, uh, uh, John Mechie, and there's another Tank player Dale. off the top of my head. He's traded up for those players on mm -hmm. in the second or third round. So, right. you know, he loves to move around on day two. He does not want to get snaked on a player. And so trading back is the way that he's going to get those assets. And so moving back, maybe it's five or six spots in the first round to get some of those assets. It, it, it may work out really well. Now, what do you think about this? If you see a, a Bauer slipping, what do you what, what's your thoughts on Bauer slipping and getting in front of the Colts or the Jags and snagging them? A, what are your thoughts a, on that? That's a big move. That's a, to get up to fifteen to get up to, to you know in front of those teams. That's right. a big move. It's 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 tough to see how the Texans can justify using those assets to make that type of big move. I could mm -hmm. see I could see twenty three. To 20 if a guy that they love is there at 20 and they feel like sure. they got to you know they 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 talked trade with pittsburgh a couple of years ago um right. when when, when it, they had the pick that they ultimately used on Kenyon green so right. maybe up maybe up a few spots but to get in front of indianapolis all the way to new orleans um that that'd be really tough and that'd be too many assets and i i don't care i don't necessarily care who the player is it's too much Got you. Overall, man, I'm actually kind of um, happy with free agency so far. Uh, I think you got mixing for what you were going to pay, uh, what what the Giants are paying for Singletary. And I think mixing is a little bit of an upgrade. I think if he was our running back uh, against the Ravens, it might be a different story. Maybe. Maybe. That's just my opinion. I don't. I mean, just it's just an opinion, you know, subjective yeah. opinion here. But um, I, I think Mixon probably would have been a little bit more of a dynamic back in that situation. Um, Damian Pierce coming back as a wide uh, running back three special teamers. And uh, hopefully we could, you know, hopefully he bounces back. But obviously, like you said, man, I, I, I won't bank on that so much. But it wouldn't be so bad if uh, we make, you know, snag maybe a running back in the uh, free agency before draft because I know one, there's one a couple one of draft picks in the nice. third or fourth round. Yeah. Yeah. One more vet would be nice. JR, man, I appreciate you jumping in, man. I'm going I'm to I'm keep it rolling here. Hey, thank you so much, man. Peace. Good stuff from JR. Uh, Techno Viking is weighed in in the, uh, the chat. He says, don't have much to say. Thanks for the coverage. I'm here since 2002 with this Texans team. It's so exciting. We used to say in Keenum we trust. We're still going to keep that going. We've got to add Casario and D'Amico. How great it is to be a longtime Texans fan right now. Techno Viking, appreciate you, man. Appreciate you sticking through uh, some of the technical issues. Appreciate everybody in the chat. Uh, you want to get in like the top of the chat. That's the video for you. Jim Davies weighs in. Happy Pi Day 3.14, of course, is the numeric number called Pi. It's got a bunch more digits. Um, I had a piece of pizza today in honor of pie day. So not my preferred pie that I wanted to eat today, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. It's even, even bad pizza is good pizza, but it was even bad pizza is good, but this was actually good pizza. A little hot honey on there. Hot honey is like all the rage now, all the rage. And people charge way too much for it. Way too much for it. Uh, Jarvis wants to weigh in. Jarvis, what you got for me? Fire away. What's up, Cody? I wanted to ask you, what do you think about Kareem Hunt being uh running back two? Well, that would make for an, an interesting history amongst um the running backs. 
that the Texans would have if that's the case. Um, you can do a lot worse than Kareem Hunt is what I would say. Mm-hmm. I would I would tell you this. I want somebody who is very clearly dev- defined from a style of play. So Mixon is not a true bruiser. He's not a true receiving guy. He's like a little bit of both. He's kind of that versatile do-it-all guy. I would want someone who is very clearly – just a, a, a hammer short yardage guy, or I'd want someone who is very clearly, um, you know, your scat back third down guy. Um, you know, so I think Hunt kind of replicates a little bit of what Mixon does because he's not your traditional hammer from a running back standpoint, but he's not just the wide receiver type guy. So I think it's a little bit of replication of skills, and I kind of want that that other veteran to be more specialized yes. one way or the other. But uh, Hunt, Hunt, look, a veteran name in addition to a rookie and your four running backs are Mixon, Pierce, Vet, and Rookie, like you can you can figure that out mm-hmm. in training camp and figure out the one, two, three and, and, and be in a good spot. Do you have a particular running back you will want? You know, somebody in the chat the other day threw Damian Harris's name in there. And okay. I just think him for a guy that just kind of – you know, just hey, it's third and one. Hand the ball to Damian Harris. He's going to run as hard as he can and get the yard. Um, Deontay Foreman's name pops up a little bit. You know, mm-hmm. has had a little bit of a roller coaster. Yeah, was like, you know, um, I I kind of like Alexander Madison with some of the success that he's had in Minnesota, w- which is it's not that far removed from the type of offense that the Texans run. Um, and then I'm really partial. This is a guy that I've liked for a couple of years. He doesn't make really a lot of sense for the Texans. But Cordell Patterson. Um, I like Cordell Patterson, too. Cordell Patterson, a <laughs> former wide receiver turned running back. And yeah, he can do everything. Atlanta didn't use him right. They could throw the ball to Cordell Patterson. He can probably help you a little bit in the return game. You know, there's mm-hmm. a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. So, Jarvis, man, I appreciate it. I appreciate you, G. Good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, we got some news here. Hold on. Did I see that? Did I see that right? The Chargers are trading wide receiver Keenan Allen to the Chicago Bears for a fourth round pick. Woo. Um, man. Texans have two fourth round picks. I so Chicago's got a crap ton of money still. Let me go look at let me go look at their cap space real quick. Yeah, the Bears, the Bears still have $44 million in cap space. So the Bears still have $44 million in cap space. Um so I've got to imagine that Keenan Allen's contract doesn't get adjusted very much. If that has already happened, please let me know. We can address it. Let me tell you what. The Bears are gearing this damn thing up for um, Caleb Williams. I mean, they're they're trying to replicate what the Texans did. Let's build a good defense. Let's play better on defense than we have. Let's go out there and get a bunch of weapons so there's no excuse for our guy from day one. That's a, that's a really savvy move by the Bears. I would have liked Keenan Allen on the Houston Texans. Um, I would have liked Keenan Allen on the Houston Texans, but this is another one of those financial situations where it, you know, it doesn't make sense. It, it, it doesn't make sense and you don't have the money. Now, if Titus Howard hadn't gotten a contract extension, maybe you could have done some different things here in free agency. And, and, and you could have had a Keenan Allen. But you've got Titus Howard under contract, and if he plays really well at right tackle this year, it'll be worth it. And if he doesn't, um, it'll be like the – It'll be like the third Whitney Merciless contract where it keeps you from doing some fun stuff. P. Nasty, I'll get to you in just a second. Super chat from Andy Singh. Any backup DTs around we would kick the tires on? So I'm looking at the free agent defensive tackle market um, on Spot Rack, and there's just not a bunch of guys. Nobody you've really heard of or paid a lot of attention to is, is out there. So one of the names that's interesting is Tier Tart who the Texans claimed on waivers late in the year from the Titans. And obviously being in the building, he knows them. If they really wanted Tierra Tart back, I feel like Tierra Tart would be back. Then it's just a bunch of different guys that are just, maybe there's something there. 
right? Just maybe there's something there. So James Lynch is a guy that has been a very below average player for the better part of his career, but maybe there's something there. He's 25 years old. He played for the Vikings the past couple of seasons. Taven Bryan, he's bounced around the AFC South a little bit, was on the Jaguars initially, uh, was on the Colts. Taven Bryan's, you know, a name. But there's nobody that's like awesome. Um, I'm I'm going to go look and see like, you know, is – is there a is there a somebody on a team that and maybe they need a little cap room, they got a defensive tackle, you know, so on and so forth. If is there somebody you could go out there and go trade for? But even then, okay, you're trading for a guy. Is it expensive? How do you get him? Um, what is the draft compensation? It's 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 tough to go and find a guy. You really here's what you really need. You really need someone to get cut. You need someone to get cut and then just get that guy. Um, you need to, you need somebody to get cut and you need that guy. Andy, I appreciate the super chat. Yeah, there's somebody said stop wasting your time. There's nothing much out there. <laughs> Don't waste your time. <laughs> oh man, P nasty. What do you got for me, man? Hey, what's going on, everybody? So <laughs> we're a bunch of nerds, man. Did somebody say it was Happy Pie Day? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, three point bunch of nerds. I just I love this community. Um, this my fellow. I guess I don't know what we would call ourselves, but like you know the Stoot Squads. I just <laughs> man, I I I want to help caution everybody to try to just stay a little bit relaxed this draft and not worry about these prospects and just let the board come to us. I'm real excited about the draft that we can really kind of do whatever we want best player available and let nick do it it's really admirable the patience that that him and and D'Amico have had and really building this reputation and uh it's really starting to bear fruit and we got a we got a tough schedule next year like it's gonna be tough so we're gonna need everybody we're gonna need everybody to play you know, healthy. We're going to need, I, I hope we don't get banged up in camp again. I don't really, it doesn't matter who our running back is if for a line's playing like that. But um, in my mind, if we get this Leggett guy and we get Damian Pierce, it's probably going to be like they're both of their accents. I'm seeing like Bobby Boucher and the water boy and like maybe oh. a part Lycan or something. It's going to be a lot of fun. So. All right. I got it. I'll go. I, I'll pull the video up and I, it might get to, <laughs> Take care. Thanks for having me again, as always. Yeah, P. Nasty. Thank you, man. Thank you for jumping in. Xavier Leggett is – I hope this doesn't get the video in trouble because I'm playing somebody else's content. Oh, do I not have the video saved? Oh, here we go. All right. This is this is from a um, this is from a Titans interview on Titans.com. So I'm giving proper credit here. It's from a Titans interview on Titans.com with Xavier Leggett. Whether you're taking a pitch or catching a short pass or catching a deep ball, what would you say are the best parts of your game that help you get into the end zone so often? Oh, man, I say the deep ball, man. But uh, I really feel like any way that I get the ball in my hand, I could get it to that end zone. Oh. <laughs> he's, one of my, he's one of my absolute favorite. He's one of my absolute favorite prospects on his voice alone. He is. He is so interesting as a prospect from a football standpoint. And then when you find out that he – Sounds like that. It is, I mean, I need that guy on the Houston Texans. I need that guy on the Houston Texans. He is so fun. He's he's kind he's kind of a Debo a little bit. You know, I think Debo has tweeted about him. Kind of a Debo, a little bit of everything. Get him the ball, see what happens. Um, big physical guy. I love him. I love him. JB. Get to you right now on the super chat. 
Uh, Caesar, stay right there. We'll get to you in just a second here. JB asks some strong free agent safeties. What's your favorites? I only have one favorite, and that is um, Justin Simmons. If the, if the Texans can get Justin Simmons, then <clears throat> um, I will not worry about the two big guys in the middle of the uh, in the middle of the defense. If the Texans can just get Justin Simmons, I will not worry about the defensive tackles. And then you know we'll figure it out. Figure it out. R Randy Moss territory with that voice. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, how much cap do we have left? For those questions, I usually just say uh, follow this guy on YouTube and Twitter. Texans cap, cap and trade. He also has a sub stack that is fantastic as well. Uh, cap, I'm sure, has tweeted recently some sort of update on the current cap situation. So follow him, real simple, on Twitter at Texans cap. But I think it's in the vicinity of 20. Vicinity of 20. Do they have the money for Simmons? Price probably needs to come down a little bit. But the longer he's out there, the easier it is to get him. Caesar, what's up, man? Fire away. What you got? Yo, man. No, I was just – I, I, I kind of just joined like two minutes ago. Uh, are we still talking about the Eric Armstead situation? Yeah, if you got something on it, we can talk about it real quick. Yeah, man, I'm just like – I know everybody says that like Nick's been doing good this uh, free agency, which he has, but – I'm just like a little like frustrated because I feel like we just keep settling for less, you know. Like we didn't get Saquon, we had to settle for for Joe Mixon. With Joe Mixon, he's good. Don't get me wrong, but you know we we know that Nick wanted Saquon. I mean, paying him three million more. I mean, I think we could have done it. And then Eric Arms said, you know, now we have to kind of settle for less again at the D tackle spot, you know. And Daniel Hunter, you know, we're, we we kind of got lucky just getting him because, you know, other people offered him more, you know, and. You know, he came here for the hometown, you know, and it just feels like Nick kind of just cheaps out a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Do you, do you feel that way? Man, I, 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 I disagree with you just because, I mean, he spent he spent $51 million on the best pass rusher in the free agency, you know? So, I mean, I, th yeah. that's, that's one of those things that it's hard to say that he's anywhere close to cheap when that's the case. They paid a premium price for Aziz Alshire. Uh, at linebacker, like the, I mean, he's he's one of the highest compensated linebackers from this free agency group. The thing about Armstead is they couldn't get him and Daniel Hunter. Like that has that to me has become apparent that they couldn't get yeah. both of them um, because of the it seems what the financial commitment that that Armstead was looking for. So if it, I'm choosing between the two, I'm picking Hunter because he's more productive and he's at a more po important position. As far oh, as the yeah. running backs go, like. If the difference in getting Hunter, like Hunter plus, um, so Hunter plus Mixon is greater than Barkley plus Armstead. You know what I'm saying? Like if the difference mm -hmm. in getting Saquon is not getting Hunter and settling for Armstead, then again, I would prefer the Hunter scenario. So a lot of the positivity from this free agency is tied up with the fact that Hunter is the big acquisition and he's going to be a big game changer. Yeah. Or like, um, well, yeah, I guess I see what you're saying, but you don't, you don't think they kind of at least did a little bit more like to get safe. Cause I know, so we just extended mixing for what is it? Nine mil a year after this contract is up nine mil a year. Yeah. Uh, and then, yes. and then um, he got, he but, signed for 12 with the Eagles, right? Here, here's the thing though. It's a max value of 27 million. Saquon's max value is in the 40 millions, and he got more guaranteed money. Mixon's guaranteed money is only 13 million dollars on this deal. Oh, so, okay. so that, that if Joe Mixon falls off a cliff, it's very easy to move on from Joe Mixon. If Saquon falls off a cliff, it's a little bit harder to move on from Saquon. It's not drastically right. different, but it's different enough to the amount that like. Like they're going to be dancing up on the salary cap line for the next couple of years, trying to hit as much as they can while before they have to pay CJ Stroud and they have to pay Will Anderson. And I would also say, too, for anybody that's worried about, hey, like, do they have enough money to do this? Do they have enough money to do that? There's contracts to be restructured. There's a couple of players that can be moved on from. Like, if they really have to do something, they'll find the money. Uh, I, I'm not super worried about that. Caesar, man, I appreciate you jumping in. I'm going to keep it moving here. 
Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. Good stuff from Caesar. Um, the chat's already talked about this a little bit, but Hollywood Brown is headed to Kansas City, according to Ian Rappaport. A one-year deal worth up to $11 million for a chance to cash in next year. Well, boy, that, that sounds just about perfect for Patrick Mahomes. That sounds just about perfect. Hollywood was also one of my, if it gets cheap enough, please sign him, guys. Um, so that's off the board. That's off the board. Dang it. All right. That's great for the Chiefs. Now we know why Mahomes restructured his contract and got the Chiefs 20 something million dollars in cap space. Uh, Brandon says, so the Chiefs might not grab a wide receiver anymore. This is actually a great point, Brandon. That's a great observation. The Chiefs picking at number 32, heavily mocked to draft a wide receiver with Rasheed Rice, the investment here in Hollywood. Maybe that moves down their priority list a little bit, pushes a wide receiver down, or maybe Kansas City wants to trade up for somebody and the Texans are a good trade partner. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't mind that, would you? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Here's one Here's one thing that's super annoying about Aaron Jones and Saquon Barkley. I was talking about this with Landry Locker today and a couple of other media members. I am super annoyed that Aaron Jones playing the Vikings and Saquon Barkley playing the Giants was so important to them. I was super annoyed by that. I was super annoyed that they seemingly added that in as a big time part of their decision making. And for for whatever reason, that irks me. You can make the other team feel your absence without having to play them twice a year. So I was slightly annoyed by that. I'll get to you in just a second, Daniel. 119 dozen 55 sweet, which is also a probably a play call. Question, do the Texans need a more credible backup QB as an expected playoff team? I don't know who that guy is. I don't know who that guy is. Uh, are, 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 there, are there backup quarterbacks? that? I mean, they have four quarterbacks on the roster. Tim Boyle signed to a futures contract. Davis Mills in the last year of his contract. And um, Case Keenum's on the team. So, like, I don't know that they need this. I... Can you win two games if C.J. Stroud's down for a month in case Keenum's your starter? Probably not. But the offense should be better deeper. The defense should be better. I don't think they need to invest in that. If something fell into their lap, maybe. But I don't. I don't. I don't believe you need to invest in that. Daniel's got another question. What do you got, Daniel? I just want to kind of talk about the AFC South as a whole. Like all the teams are making moves. Well, the Colts are making resigning their own players, but our D line looking really good. Don't know why Collins is gone, but our D line is looking really good. But now you look at the Jags. The Jags is looking pretty scary on that D line. Yeah. Um, the Titans, if the Mayo man can uh, make take a step forward with uh, Calvin Mayo. Ridley and and. Uh, you know, Trayvon Burks can maybe, you know, reach that draft status. They're kind of scary. Like, we only won this this, this division by, you know, final game of the year and Dalton Schultz ripping the ball out of the quarterback's hands. Yeah. Um, like, how, how are you feeling about the AFC South right now? I, I love the Texans' spot in the AFC South. The Titans stink at quarterback. I don't believe in Will Levis, and their offensive line's horrible. Uh, the Jaguars – told everyone they wanted to improve their offensive line and literally ran it back with that offensive line. Yes, their defense got a little bit better, but their offense got worse because they lost Calvin Ridley. I don't believe Gabe Davis is an upgrade over Ridley. And as far as the the uh, the Colts go, Anthony Richardson's a total unknown. If Anthony Richardson's awesome, then maybe the Colts are, are you know, trading haymakers with you. But I, I don't believe in Anthony Richardson. I also don't believe in his ability to stay healthy. And Joe Flacco is their backup. It's like Flacco and the Colts. That doesn't really scare me. So I'm Does not the super I'm, schedule scary at all. No, and, and the reason I would say that is I, I was I'm looking through it and I'm thinking about it. 
yeah, there's some good teams on there. The Texans are walking in on Sundays with the quarterback advantage in a lot of those matchups. You know, QB advantage, maybe the head coach advantage in some of those matchups. And then that defense is going to be better. Like, yeah, you play a better better schedule. Uh, they got to play you too, which I think is a, a, a fun mantra that kind of C.J. Stroud talked about at one point in the middle of this season. It's like they got to play the Houston Texans. Like we're playing them, but they also got to play the Houston Texans. And in 2024, that means a whole heck of a lot more than it did at 2023 at one point. Daniel, appreciate you jumping in, man. Good stuff. Daniel, in, out, good, you know, good, good, good questions. Keeping it flowing. There's your, there's, if he, if he'll, if he'll do it for the minimum, there's your backup quarterback upgrade. If he'll do it for the minimum, there's your backup quarterback upgrade. Jimmy G. Tannehill's going to get a good backup job somewhere, I would think. Oh, yes, we didn't talk about this. Uh, Curtis Samuel getting the getting the new deal. Um, Curtis Samuel to the Bills. Okay move for them, uh, but takes, you know, for any of us who are waiting for maybe Curtis Samuel's price to come down, hangs around in free agency. Yeah, that one, that one stung a little bit. BG says, hit that like button, folks. You got a little thumbs up button? Would appreciate that. I thank you for that. I thank everybody for showing up, man. P appreciate everybody hanging through the audio issues to begin. Apologize my, uh, for that. And it turned into a camera issue. Um, let's talk a little bit about Joe Mixon. Um, I know I talked 41 minutes ago about how we're going to talk about Joe Mixon in a second. But let's talk about this Joe Mixon contract really quick. This is an excellent extension, and I kind of talked about it a little bit there with Caesar. This is an excellent extension because if Mixon is playing well, he's worth that money. We just saw that productive running backs are worth eight to twelve million dollars a year. Eight on the you know first new contract, maybe not as you know bell cow ish as some of the other guys like DeAndre Swift and Tony Pollard. A little bit more for a bell cow guy like Joe Mixon, and then um, you know dynamic potential offensive guy like Saquon Barkley a little bit more, but. Three years, twenty-seven million, and the thirteen million guaranteed. It can be a one-year deal if you need it to be. Like you, Mixon can you can get rid of that thirteen million all in one year. And Joe Mixon talked today at the podium, and the way he talked about the Texans and the opportunity, um, he said it's it's really nice to be wanted. And Cincinnati didn't want him; they were going to cut him. And he talked about how it was so tough because he was sitting there thinking he was going to get cut, and then the Texans trade for him. It's a little bit of a whirlwind day. Well, yeah, he's really wanted. He got he got some brand-new money added onto this. I call him new money mixing. Um, he got some brand-new money added onto this thing, and he's ready to rock. Like He is excited about the possibility and the opportunity of making some things happen for the Houston Texans and this team. He talked about how he wants to be a leader. He wants to bring what he brings to the table. And I, I like the mentality. I like the move. It's not a bunch of money. It kicks in, um, you know, in a way where if he's playing really well and you want to get him again, you know, move the money around, take care of him, yada, yada, kick it in the future. The manipulation of the contract is easy to do. I like it, man. I like it a lot. And, um, and uh, I really appreciate the foresight to put together running back one for this year and at least next year when there's so much uncertainty in the running back room behind him. Like you could you could have walked into you could have walked into 2025 with Mixon heading to free agency, Damian Pierce not being any good, and some unknowns. And now you have at least one known for 2025. So it's a nice contract. Nice contract. Caesar says, look at Reader's contract. He seemed pretty cheap. I'm assuming he means DJ Reader, who got the uh, deal with the Detroit Lions. I would say this about the Lions and DJ Reader. They are far more comfortable with previously injured free agents than I feel like a lot of teams are. 
the Lions believe in their training staff and they don't worry too much about injuries. Reader's coming off a pretty serious late season injury. Um, and so, yes, DJ Reader would have been nice. Yes, he's better than basically every one of the guys that he has. I would also say that at two years, nearly $28 million, so 27 and a, and a quarter. There's no way DJ Reader should be making more money than Sheldon Rankins. And they and they bowed out at Rankins at $12 million. So that's too pricey for them. It, it, didn't, it doesn't look that big, but it's too pricey for the Texans based on the way that they operated with Rankins. Trading Collins was the only dumb move Casario did. Yeah, I just I can't figure that one out just yet. Unless there's something about Malik Collins' health that the team knows about that they're worried about and they don't want to have to depend on that guy. Cody, is there any chance on Justin? As in Justin Jefferson or Justin Simmons? Because I tell you, it's a long shot on both of them. And when I say long shot about Justin Jefferson, I mean... I'm going to Vegas at one point in March, and I'm not going to try to pay my mortgage uh, with my Vegas winnings. Um, I'd have a better chance of doing that than the Texans getting Justin Jefferson. There's there's basically no chance. I'll be happy to eat my words. There's basically no chance. And um, Justin Simmons, uh, there's a chance. The longer free agency lasts, the longer free agency lasts, the better of the chance becomes because he'll get cheaper. He'll get cheaper. Darwin, whose logo is a Longhorn, says we are taking Tavondre Sweat or Byron Murphy. I would be, I would be excited with one of those two guys. I'd be over the moon with Murphy. I'd be very excited about Tavondre Sweat. I'd be very excited with Tavondre Sweat. What about Odell Beckham Jr.? He's more washed than your favorite sweatshirt. Wait, who's why? Why are people why are people going at Kroger, man? I I like I like I like any grocery store that uh, I like any grocery store that has good prices. I don't care where they are. I don't care where they are. What's everybody going at Kroger for? Kroger's got the best deal on uh, diet sodies. Sometimes they'll do buy three, get three free. Sometimes they'll do buy two, get two free. Sometimes they'll buy three, get two free. HUB doesn't really do that. I take Tyler Boyd as a three receiver. Expensive, more you know, more expensive than you think, but. Um, I don't like him that much. I don't like him that much. Uh, Fisky was the oh yeah guy when he ran the 40 at the combine. Yes, he was. And he ran it very fast and he tested very well in basically everything. Basically everything. Cody, what do you think about going for T. Higgins? Doesn't make any sense because the money and the draft pick commitment. Plus, I don't believe the Bengals want to trade him. I think I believe they want to just force him to play this upcoming season and then head free agency at the end of the year. Colton asks about the Collins trade again, because this means they're taking a defensive tackle at 27. Here's what I would say about feeling like they have to do something at a certain draft spot. I don't believe this is the type of organization that's going to say we have to do this or we have to do that. They do not want to be stuck in a um, stuck in a spot. Now, it may make a lot of sense to add a defensive tackle. And if, you know, Byron Murphy is sitting there at 23, draft him and don't think another thing of it. But be very cautious about saying they have to do this or have to do that. It'd be nice to see them leave the first round with a defensive tackle solution, but I also don't want them to draft some dude that's going to go in the second in the first round because they have to have a defensive tackle. I also don't want to see them draft some guy that's going to go in the third round in the second because they have to have this or that. 
So that that's what I would say about you got to be this position or got to be that position. Chris P says, look at the history of the defensive tackles the Texans draft in the first round. Amobi Okoye, Travis Johnson. Dorino with a super chat. Stoots, Chase Young hasn't officially signed with anyone. Would he still be in play? No. I don't believe so. Likely too much money. In addition to that, you've, you've made your defensive end investments with your one, two, three being um, Will Anderson, Daniil Hunter, and Danico Autry. Now, Autry can play tackle, so if you felt like, okay, we'll bump Autry down there, Young's still not starting. It was Hunter and Anderson are the guys. So as, as the third or fourth defensive end for the price, I don't see it. But I thank you for the super chat, Dorino. I very much appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, is it possible there's an under-the-table negotiation happening in the Malik deal, i.e., would you do this, you help us with X? I, mean, I feel like they put Malik Collins on the table because they wanted Eric Armstead. And then when that didn't happen, for whatever reason, the Texans were comfortable letting Malik Collins leave for a seventh-round pick. I don't know why exactly. I, you can put a lot of speculation into it of they didn't feel like he's any good anymore, they didn't feel like, um, you know, he's the right fit or he, his production dipped a little bit or the money was too expensive. So they saved a couple of bucks, but we, we may never know the true reason. Are they done in free agency? Probably not. I mean, there's a couple of more names or excuse me, a couple more spots that you could, um, you could go out there and improve. Uh, Salvador says, got to snag Mitchell at 23 if available or move up, add Simmons and free agency in the secondary would be elite. I believe he means Quinion Mitchell, who is my favorite player in the draft probably. Quinion Mitchell, the Toledo cornerback, is incredible. And if you add Simmons in the free agency and you get Quinion Mitchell, you're, nobody's throwing the ball on you. Christian Harris can cover. No, he can. He can, certainly. What about Quinion Mitchell in the first round, Leggett or Corley in the second? I'll take it. I'll take it. Sign me up. Sign me up. This is an interesting free agent name. Hunter Renfro. I will, I will go to my grave believing that Hunter Renfro is still a good football player. And that the that the uh Las Vegas Raiders ruined him. I'll go to my grave believing that. He was a 1,000-yard receiver a few seasons ago. The Raiders got crappy quarterback play and um, a crappy offense, and next thing you know, Hunter Renfro can't get nothing going. So I, 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 I believe in Hunter Renfro, and I'll go to my grave believing in Hunter Renfro. Joshua with the super chat. Thank you so much, Joshua. Why does everybody pretend that Autry defensive tackle is an actual solution? He's an edge that can bump inside occasionally. Now, when I tell you Autry can play some defensive tackle, I in no way, shape, or form want him to be a full-time defensive tackle. I want him to, on third and mediums and greater, go in there, rush the passer, and murder some people. That's what I want him to do. I do not want him to... Um, I do not want him to be a full-time defensive tackle, and he cannot be a full-time defensive tackle. So you're right about that, Joshua. Thank you. Bubba Homeschool. Center Connor Williams, $8 million, fixes the offensive line, immediately ran system very well in Miami. Scruggs, Mason Green, Patterson for guards. No, thank you. I do not want the Houston Texans to invest any sort of significant capital in the offensive line this offseason. I do not want a top five draft, top five round draft pick. I do not want any sort of significant money. They have options that they have made their bet on that they have to figure out. Laramie Tunsil's the left tackle. Titus Howard's the right tackle. Shaq Mason's the right guard. Drew Scruggs is going to start at either center or left guard. And then it leaves Kendrick Green, Kenyon Green, and Jarrett Patterson to fight out for the other spot. I'm tired of spending money on that position. Excuse me. I'm tired of seeing the Texans spend money on that position, they've got the assets invested in the offensive line 
figure it out. Figure it out with those guys. I don't disagree with you that Williams is a nice player. They cannot continue to dump money into the offensive line. They have to figure it out with the guys that they have in the building. JMO says, have you heard Leggett speak? Deep country voice. We played played the clip earlier. I think you'll enjoy it. I think you'll enjoy it. Move back at Lad McConkey in the back of the first round. Lad McConkey is the Georgia wide receiver. I love Lad McConkey. You're going to look at him, you're going to be like, he's a short white guy. He needs to be a slot wide receiver. Lad McConkey lined up outside more than he lined up inside at Georgia. He got loose on cats in the SEC. McConkey's a baller. I'd love to see him in a Texans uniform. Would love to see him in a Texans uniform. Stude Simmons estimated at $11.1 million per year, have about $20 million left in the cap. What would be your take on this move? At that number, it's too expensive. So the number's got to come down for Simmons a little bit. It's got to come down a little, little bit. I'll get to you in just a second, uh, T. I always forget if it's time or teaming. Sean Greg, hey, Stu's just tuning in now. What's your thought on the mixing mix and extension? Makes a ton of sense. The money looks similar to some of these other guys, but the guaranteed money's low enough that you can move on from him. Uh, not a big, not a big issue there. But they still have Kurt Heinish on the roster. Yes, the big Heine is still there, and the big Heine may need to play a little bit more than he did last year if this defense tackle room doesn't get some more bodies into it. Cap and trade. Of course, Texans cap on Twitter is where you can find him. D'Amico's got plenty of packages of three defensive ends on the line. No doubt. No doubt about that. It's, it, But it's not their base defensive line or the defensive line they employ the most. Um, so I don't know that Autry's a part-time solution. I think he's a specialized solution. I forget every time. Is it... Teeman or Timon? It's Teeman. Teeman, what do you got for yeah. me, man? Uh, I haven't uh, haven't given my, my thoughts on uh, fr our free agency so far yet. Um, I really like basically what Casario's done, and it was funny to me seeing people so up in arms like four hours into tampering, and I'm like, guys, it's tampering. It's not even free agency yet. Like, let the Texans do their work, and if after a couple days it's bad, then you can complain. But it's like you know. Lonnie Johnson signing first, sure, whatever. You can not like that move. But then people are like, oh, you know, these names are flying off the board. It's like, I don't want Christian Wilkins for $101 million. No, thank you. He's not that good. Like, the only defensive tackles I'm signing for that much is Aaron Donald and Chris Jones. Those are the only two I'd sign for that much. And even then, I probably wouldn't do it. So, Yeah. And look, I, patience is a virtue. I'll admit I didn't have it on the first day. I couldn't see the vision – for running back. I could see the vision of them spending some other money on defensive acquisitions, but I couldn't see the vision on running back. And then they, they snuck in there and grabbed Joe Mixon and that worked out pretty well. And it's turned into a pretty nice situation. So I, I I'm with you. And look, I, I said this, um, I said this on the site the other night when I was writing about it, 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 it might be a while before I question Nick Casario you know, with the veracity that I questioned him on day one when he's able to put together some of the stuff that he did. It, he, he for whatever reason, he didn't like that day one stuff, but he can take care of business on day two. Oh, yeah, and it's, you know, getting to Daniil Hunter, it's like it's such a good pickup because it's a, it's a two-year deal, right? So even yep. if he's washed, let's say, you don't no have a long-term commitment, right? And, I mean, yeah, he's 29, like, you know, d you see defensive ends sometimes play till they're like, look at Danico Autry. He's 33. He had 11 and a half sacks last year, right? You know, these guys, you know, some of them just, you know, they age well, right? Like, and yep. I think Hunter's been, I, I think he's had health issues, but he's not been like injury prone in his career. So I don't think we have to worry about any long-term issues. He had a, um, he had a neck thing one year and then he tore his pectoral muscle the following year. So he had a he had a neck thing during the COVID year, and then he tore his pectoral muscle um, the following year, and then he's been basically healthy the rest of the time. Yeah, I mean, I could tear my pectoral muscle at the gym. Like that's not like a an, a, an injury of you being injury prone, right? Like it just kind of happens. 
Yeah. And so, I mean, and look, I mean, JJ tore his peck, Whitney Merciless tore his peck. Like, the, you, yeah. Guys tear their pecs a lot yeah. in the NFL. Yeah, no. So I'm not it's super nothing, worried about that. No. And yeah, another thing, too, is I really like the Al Share signing. I think, in terms of positions that we lost, like, I think Al Share is better than Cashman, even though I did, I did really like Cashman, but Al Share, I think, is a better player than Cashman. And then I think Hunter right now was better than Grenard. Now, Grenard might have longevity, but Grenard had one good season and he had an elite defensive end on his side in Will Anderson. I'm going to be interested to see what he does with Minnesota because I think he's their only, like, premier pass rusher, right? Like, he's not going to have a Will Anderson on the other side, so he's going to eat up a bulk of the double teams, and I'm curious to see how he deals with them. Yeah, I, I like I like JG as a dude. He did really good this past season in his, you know, his healthy season for the Texans, but for the money that they're spending with um, him and the money the Texans ended up getting for Hunter, like I'll, I'll do the Hunter deal uh, 10 times out of 10. Um, oh. And they, they got a little, they got a little bit of a pass rush the opposite side with, they signed the Van Ginkle kid from Miami, but that ain't Will Anderson. So no, no. And, All right, what else, what else you got for us, man? Yeah. Um, I I'm curious to see what Nick is going to do with the defensive tackle position. Cause yeah. we signed depth guys, right? Not really starters and i was thinking right because we signed jeff okuda but i don't think jeff okuda is going to be cornerback two so we need a cornerback two but we also need a wide receiver three now we also need a defensive tackle so while nick has killed it in free agency we still have some needs left and i think a wide receiver three you can get in free agency like there's i think there's still oh team and your your you you cut out and then your audio cut out um, but I'll get to those things that you said real quick about the Okuda and the wide receiver three. Okuda's wa- o- o- Okuda's cornerback two. Like he he's the dude. He's cornerback two, and unless something awesome falls into their lap, Okuda's the guy opposite Derek Stingley because you can you can play him this year if he plays really well. Then you extend him and you got two young corners taking care of business and he's not going to be super expensive. Or if he plays really well and he's super expensive, you let him walk and hopefully you've drafted somebody to replace him. Or to Tiemann's point, you know, if, if he ends up as cornerback three, that means somebody really good has come in, jumped in, and got him at cornerback two. And then w- one more, you said the, the wide receiver three, right? Yes, yeah, so wide receiver three. So it's like... Uh, you know, I really wanted Curtis Samuel, and I think three years, thirty million. I think that that would have been a uh, a pretty good. Oh, that's um, too much. That's too much. You think so? Yeah. That's too much for that's too much for wide receiver three. Nico's yeah, about to make enough. Nico's about to make twenty four million a year. You know. That's true. So that, yeah, and th- yeah, and the saving grace with that too is this is a deep, deep receiver class. So you could get a wide receiver three in the third round, right? There's pretty, pretty there's, easily. There's twenty five guys I like more than Curtis Samuel in this draft at wide receiver. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not really stressing wide receiver. Cornerback, I think... You're worried. I I can tell. Yeah, I would have thought we were going to take one in the first round, but it's not a deep defensive tackle draft, so we might have to go defensive tackle first round just by virtue of a need and then leave corner to the second round. But other than like the seven or eight first round guys, I don't know if there's a cornerback in this draft that is going to be a cornerback two. There, there's some there's some guys – look, I think the big thing is if you don't spend the first-round pick on cornerback, you got to get a guy in there that can push Okuda by the end of the year. It maybe doesn't solve it week one, but doesn't solve it the first two months of the season. But by the end of the year, if that guy can push Okuda, then you've made a good pick. Yeah, exactly. Team, and I'm going to keep it rolling, man. I appreciate you jumping in. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, dudes. Good – oh, I cut him off when he was saying the nice stuff. Sorry. Uh, thank you for jumping in. Uh, the bully has jumped in with a, a super chat. The bully Khalil Davis starting a defensive tackle. He's a beast. Khalil Davis played much better than most people expected him to play last year. And he came on really strong there at the end. It felt like the more playing time he got, the more successful he was. If he has to start, you know, maybe there are, um, maybe there's a couple of guys that show up that can be better options than him. But if he has to start, it's not the absolute, oh, my God, sky is falling, worst thing in the world. All right, I want to catch up with some of these comments. I'm eight minutes behind in the chat, so I'm going to go fire through these real quick. Stutes of your Cacero, right now, what would you do? What were your realistic targets in the draft? 
Uh, I'd cut Robert Woods, I'd restructure a contract, and I'd sign Justin Simmons, and then I would uh, hope that Quinion Mitchell falls to me at 23, and then nobody would be able to pass the football against the Texans. Uh, any realistic free agent moves we could still make? Everything's realistic. Um, I mean, I wouldn't dra- I wouldn't say they're going to sign an offensive lineman. The more time passes, the cheaper guys get, the better chance you is you can pay for those guys. Um, the exception of Tunts, our O-line guys are fast and mobile, great for screens and zone blocking. Like this crew, Mason's kind of a weird fit sometimes, but he takes care of business. He He started slow and then figured it out. So good stuff there. How much space do we need to set aside for the draft picks? Uh, I think it's like $9 million. Texans cap is the best resource for that. If he's still in there, please answer that cap. Uh, who are you worried the Texans taking at 23? There'd be a major reach. Chop Robinson. I don't believe he's the 23rd overall worthy. Penn State defensive end. Oh, do you trust any of PFF's DT scores? They're a resource, but they're not the the Bible for how guys play. Kendra Green needs to work on getting better pass blocking. Get run block, but sucks at pass blocking. I, I mean, I like Kendra Green, nice guy. Hopefully, he doesn't play. Hopefully, he gets beat out by a couple of guys. Brandon was not happy about how things worked out early. <laughs> yeah, the first first day there was some. It was rough. It was rough. Darwin says, "Feel like Will Anderson and, and Hunter will be unstoppable." From your lips to God's ears, Darwin. Um, Rick, you're being too tough on Laramie Tunsil, but he does try to cheat the system a little bit. He does try to cheat the system a little bit. Casario got lucky since he picked up Moss because he blundered the running back free agency. There's a little bit of luck to everything we do in life. You know, it's a little bit of luck to everything we do in life. I watched tape on Autry last year and he lined up at DT a lot, did well against the run. Not every down, but some they'll rotate against. Yeah, he can, he can bump inside, but he shouldn't be, he shouldn't be the defensive tackle, but he can bump inside. Don't forget defensive backs in the draft, really nice ones there. There's there's legitimately, I could see seven different guys going in the first round at cornerback. Not to say that all seven will go, but like amongst the cornerbacks, there are, there's a potential for seven of them to be first rounders to me. That's Quinion Mitchell from Toledo. It's Terry and Arnold from Alabama. It's Kool-Aid McKinstry from Alabama. It's Nate Wiggins from Clemson. It's Cooper DeGene from Iowa. And it's Enos Rakestraw junior from Missouri. So two, three, four, five, six. Did I say seven? I'm at six. There's six guys that could go in the first round. And I mean, Kamari Lasseter is not a first round guy. So I'm not going to say Kamari Lasseter, but yeah, there's six guys that could go in the first round that are corners. Oh, um, Okuda's not proven good at all at best. He can be our backup. That's why I'm baffled. He messed up that Collins trade. I'd rather draft a CB. They still can draft a cornerback. They can still draft a cornerback. They can still draft a cornerback. Broby with the soup, 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 super chat. What do you think if we get Mike Williams one year, eight to $10 million and cut Bobby Trees? Mike Williams is really st- stuck in a certain style at wide receiver. Put him outside, let him run deep, catch the deep ball. So, like, I don't know. I don't know if he's versatile enough. He's a solid player. I I would prefer having a rookie in here. And again, if Nico Collins gets extended, he's going to be making 23, 24, 25 million dollars a year. And I don't want to have that investment. And for Mike Williams, I would think there's other spots where he can be wide receiver two that he would go to. There's there's the expert. Texans cap 3.37 million for draft class under top 51 rule. I was looking at something over the cap the other night. That's why I don't look at that. That's why I just call Texans cap or text him or wait for him to say something. Follow him on Twitter. Look, I'll show you what it looks like. 
I'll show you the, the cool stuff he does. I'll show you the cool stuff he does. He puts up, of course, as I go to show them, Cap, you don't have it anywhere. Come on. You've been putting up this little table that takes care of everything. Okay, here we go. Here's a good example of it. So he'll put this up from time to time. It's the salary cap projection that he puts up. How many contracts? Here's the cap. Carry over, yada, yada, yada. And then, you know, look, there's your draft class hold. So if I just taken my own advice and looked at Texans cap, then I would have known. But he puts this up from time to time. Obviously, it changes based on contracts that get put in and things like that. Who do you take if Mitchell isn't there? Find out Saturday when I drop a mock draft. That's right. Saturday's mock draft Saturday. Cody, do you have any faith in Kenyon Green turning around, becoming a solid guard? Uh, we can trust. Are you ready to call him a missed first rounder? Well, he's a missed first rounder because there's a lot of different players they could have taken with that pick uh, that were better. Uh, they had the opportunity to trade back and acquire more assets and draft a different guy. He's a missed first rounder right now until he's not a missed first rounder. Do I have faith? Sure. Everybody deserves that opportunity and that chance. He's got to come in here, be physical, be nasty, be mean, and really wrangle that left guard position away from his teammates. Adonai Mitchell's available at 23. Do you take him? Depends who else is available, but that'd be a perfect guy to trade back from and then take a different guy, get some assets. Texans cap goes live on uh, YouTube as well. So follow him here on YouTube. Lover J, Cody, I'm late. Please tell me you think they have a plan on offense. No upgrades at all. The best receivers off the market have to be thinking wide receiver 23. Buddy, you don't think Joe Mixon's an upgrade over um, Devin Singletary? He is. He is. Uh, they're better on offense. And the offensive line is going to be healthy. Yeah, cap and trade live stream tomorrow night, 930. Casario coaching staff aren't looking at Super Bowl this year, maybe not even division. They're taking the long view. They don't look at it that way. They don't look at it that way. The goal is to win the Super Bowl every year, and then you put the goals to get there in front of it. Um, and a lot of times, I mean, they legitimately do really look day to day sometimes. Now, obviously, free agency takes a little bit of projecting, figuring it out. Um, I like their mentality. Chris P says, Cody, thank you for all you do. I can tell you're really into it. You do your homework. That's what makes this very interesting. I got you fooled. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm kidding. I appreciate that, Chris. I really think I, I, I hope my gratitude is not annoying because I really do thank each and every one of you to come in here watch, you know, like the video, subscribe to the channel. You're subscribed to Houston football. You guys are awesome. And, and you make this so much fun. And I really enjoy this. Uh, question. Why does Landry Locker always seem pissed off? LOL. Love that guy, but he always seems that way. He just got a really, he got a, he's got a, um, what do the Eastern Europeans call it? Resting bitch face. He's got that. Um, I don't have resting bitch face. I have resting. Are you going to finish that face? Um, which works out great at restaurants when my friends don't eat all their food. Um, uh, he says, he says that, you know, that RBF sometimes. Um, but he's, he's one of the nicest guys in the world and, um, don't let the RBF fool you. He's, he's a great dude. He's a great dude. Uh, Cody, if we cut Robert Woods, are you satisfied with leadership in the wide receiver room? Yeah. Yeah, I am. When, I, when Nick Casario talks, this will get asked, and hopefully he will have a better answer than just speculating on what, what happened to Malik, uh, Malik Collins. You guys like that? <laughs> Let 
Brandon. Cap isn't real. Pay Mahomes, sign Chris Jones, keep Sneed, still sign free agent wide receiver rigged. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. This is what I'll wrap up with here because in 10 minutes, Landry Locker is going to be on YouTube taking care of business, bringing you his unique perspective on everything. You don't want to miss that coming up in 10 minutes as he will talk a lot about some of the moves, some of the things next. He and I don't always agree on things. We see things differently. Check out Landry's stream and get started in 10 minutes. But Noah asks, did you see the uniforms? John McClain said he did, and he says they are amazing. So I do want to say one thing. Um, I hope he watches because he said he watches everything all the way to the end. So this will be the real test here. After I saw the uniforms, which we'll talk about in just a second. After I saw the uniforms, Kendall came up to me and said hello, and he said some very nice things. So I wanted to make sure I gave him gave him a shout out, and then I sat there and chopped it up talking ball with Derek as well. After I saw the uniforms, um, couple cool dudes. Really appreciate the kind words they had to say. Real good stuff. So. Did I see the uniforms? Yes. What can I say about the uniforms? Damn near nothing. Okay. I can't tell you colors or look or anything like that. Here's what I'll tell you. I think people are really going to like them. I think the gear that's going to come from these uniforms, like, um, the hats, the shirts, and all that stuff is going to be sweet. And you're going to get a crack at all of it on April 23rd. That's the announcement. That's when you can start getting your stuff. And I'll tell you this. We will give away some of the new stuff here on the channel. But April 23rd, that's the announcement. That's when you're getting everything. That's when you could start buying stuff. That's when it'll be at the team store and all that other stuff, April 23rd. That's that's the date you need to circle, mark down. That's when it's coming. Yes, I saw them. And I believe people will like them. So April 23rd, and then shortly after April 23rd, we'll do some giveaway stuff here. Maybe some hats, maybe some T-shirts, stuff like that. Maybe we'll get real fancy and do some bigger stuff. But yes, I saw the uniforms. I believe people will like them April 23rd. That's what I am allowed to say. That's what I'm allowed to say. Do you like them though? That's what I'm allowed to say. I do not want to screw up and say something that I'm not supposed to. So that's what I'm saying about the uniforms. I feel like Nick Saban. All right. It, not tonight. You guys are very nice. But three weeks from now, and you're still asking me, I'm going to give you the Nick Saban. I'm going to say April 23rd, quit asking, okay? There are four uniforms, April 23rd, people are really going to like them. That's all I'll say, and that's all I can say. That's all I can say. Uh, P. Nasty, I see your comment. Send me an email. Send me an email. P. Nasty, I see your comment. That's very generous. Send me an email. Okay. Middle finger says, I've seen them already. Sean says, if I'm buying a new uni, I best drop some weight for us. I, I, I spoke to someone recently about making sure there's bigger guy options because I'm a bigger guy myself. And when we have Houston football stuff, which will drop shortly after the new uniform stuff, um, we have Houston football stuff. I'll make sure we got big guy stuff. So middle finger saw him. Don't say nothing. You know, you know the rules. You know the rules. Don't say nothing. I'm really trying not to get in trouble. I, I, know, I know I'll slip. I know I'll mess up. So, okay, 
Housekeeping. Mock draft Saturday. Mock draft dropping Saturday. So be looking for that video. Mock draft Saturday. Be looking for that video. Okay, real quick. In the life of Colby, will it have the same logo? April 23rd, and people are going to like them. April 23rd, and people are going to like them. That's what I'll say to you. That's all I'm going to say. Um, housekeeping. Mock draft on Saturday. Okay? Mock draft Saturday. That's the video Saturday. I'm going to a wedding this weekend, so I may record it a little early. But I don't think a lot of huge stuff's going to change. So mock draft Saturday. Don't want to miss that. That's Saturday's video. Really appreciate everybody getting in here on the videos. And um, I have a lot of fun this week. It's been the busiest week for the channel. We're over 6,000 subscribers. Thank you, everybody. It's so awesome. It's fantastic. Uh, I'm having a blast doing this. I think you guys are having a blast here in the channel. We're talking Texans, having a blast. How many times can I say blast? Blast, 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 blast. That's a catchphrase I need to get rid of. It's awesome. So thank you, everybody, for that. Check out Houston football, www.houfootball.com. www.houfootball.com. The link's in the description down below. Seven bucks a month. You get everything. Really good stuff. Jose says, RIP Fred Fowler. If you, if you know who Fred is, he was on the radio in Houston for a long time. Um, Fred was very nice to me in my career. There's a lot of stuff that Fred helped me out with. Uh, I did, I produced Fred's audio book. Fred, unfortunately passed away. Very sad, uh, much too young. Um, I feel bad for his family, uh, his, you know, his brothers and, uh, his children. Um, it's the sad deal. I don't, I don't want to see any of my media brethren. Uh, pass away, and certainly not someone who passed away a little too soon, uh, like Fred Fowler. So, R.I.P. Fred, and um, that was that was a sad deal. I, I I hated seeing that notification pop up on my phone. That was not fun. That was not fun. Um, all right, ten thirty. So you got plenty of time to go to the bathroom, get you a new drink, and sit down and square up for Landry Locker. He's taking over right now here on YouTube. Get in here, 1030. Go pop over to Landry's. I'll be in the chat, chit-chatting and BSing and talking with everybody, okay? When you get in there, tell them Cody Stutz sent you, all right? Tell them Cody Stutz sent you. Uh, really appreciate everybody, man. Thank you so much. We're having a lot of fun. There's a lot of great content out there covering the Texans. Landry does a great job. Cap does a great job. It's a lot of great stuff covering the Texans. It means the world to me that you guys choose to come and hang out with me here on YouTube and to choose Houston football. Thank you so much. I really appreciate everybody. Really appreciate it. We finish the streams the same way each and every time. Sometimes I forget, but we finish the streams each and every time. It's my hope for you. It's my charge for you as well. I want you to eat good, sleep good, be good. This guy doesn't even read the chat, never listening again. I read the chat more than anybody, buddy. I want you to eat good, sleep good, be good. And we'll talk Texans again soon. Thank you, everybody. See you in the chat room for Landry Locker.